Hello friends, Neo Toy Story here with kind of a special update. So I got my kind of dream 3D printer a few days ago and I've been busy at work just uh, doing all kinds of little like fun designs. Um, and in addition to having my 3D printer finally, I am working on setting up my laboratory and making it exactly the way I want it to maximize my capabilities. And um, part of that process was a project I started many, many months ago, which was the idea of a universal uh, multi-directional joint that could be easily 3D printed and adapted for all kinds of different uses. For me specifically, the thing that I wanted it to work with most of all was um, like booms for attaching peripherals, whether that's a laser or a, a camera, a light, a, a, an alligator clip for holding things, a clamp, whatever. Um, obviously the utility of having uh, mobile arms of various lengths that are attached to the ceiling or walls and being able to use those as extra arms for yourself for various things is is quite useful <clears throat> so believe it or not like and this is blowing my mind just a little I banged this entire design out in about an hour that's how long it took me to have this little like mini breakthrough and um, this is a small scale version that is designed to work with uh, metal electrical conduits that's where this uh, sleeve like fits into the conduit and you can clamp it or screw it in place and uh, this bigger one is for PVC although the scale is a little bit off so it doesn't actually work that's a work in progress but I'm just going to demonstrate kind of how this works, how it didn't work, how it had some issues, and how I ironed those out in the following versions. This one's just easier to work with, so I'll probably be doing most of the work with uh, the smaller one, but I will definitely be demonstrating the second one too. Here, I'm just going to start with uh, this this part. So this is my breakthrough piece right here. And this is actually a second version and not um, not the original. This this is the original. If you can see on the inside, it's, it's smooth. There's no reinforcement of any kind in the center. It's just a perfect cylinder. And the, the second version, I added reinforcement sections these little supports here and then there was a third version as well which is inside here and i'll be showing that in a minute or two um this yeah let me pop let me pop this open first uh when it comes to the smaller one it's actually pretty easy to just take this apart with just a couple pounds of force it's not it's not very hard um, the bigger one, of course, bigger scale, it's going to take more force. I'd say this takes about like maybe f 10 to 15 pounds of pressure to pop the, pop the joints out. I think it's kind of cool that it can be sort of dislocated, almost like a human, a human joint. Um, so let me just see if I can pop one of these out. There you go. So yeah, this is the third version of the key component here and uh, I found out that these little portholes make for good um, deconstruction points so the the third version has a couple of features that make it better than the original that's firstly it's got these inner structural supports that prevent lateral cracking when these uh, tongues are flexing. And then secondly, 
these vertical um, little parts actually help it 3D print better when it's on the build plate. As you can see, there was a little bit of trouble with some of these, like this one, basically it de-adhered from the build plate and then it started to um, fabricate a little off center. So that was solved with these little vertical tongues that act as supports when it, the printer is printing this top part. So that problem was solved and I, I feel like this component is actually pretty much in its final form. And this is sort of the key to the whole system and how it works. It uses a very, very basic uh, kind of tongue and groove type thing. Uh, you can see the profile of, of the tongue here. It's just a 45 degree angle, uh, one by one by one millimeter, at least on here, and two by two by two millimeters on here. And then, um, Inside all the joints, the sockets, there's basically just a contiguous groove that mirrors the reverse of this tongue, and that's how that's how that basically works. And it 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 works surprisingly well. It creates this. Uh, I wanted to mention like these are not high poly cylinders; they are 24 face cylinders. And I kind of like that personally because it basically it gives you this ratcheting kind of like clicking action where it actually will click 24 times as it makes a complete circle, which is useful for me if I'm trying to precision position something. The clicking actually kind of gives you a little bit of a like a landmark for you know how things are positioned. It also helps it line up really really nicely um yeah what oh yeah this this is the other important thing i wanted to mention about this so <clears throat> kind of cool how how the center joint works it uh, probably my favorite thing about this whole design is that while uh, you would make an entire articulated joint that has a, a, hun a 360 degree mobility is in this and then it has a a little bit over 180 degrees of mobility going in the other direction you can do all of that with uh, 360 here 360 here 360 here 360 here um, well theoretically but it's actually 180 so it's 360 total so 360 360 and 360 uh, which is 180 times 2. Um, you can do all that with just... Uh, these parts are identical. These parts are all identical. This part is unique. And then these parts are also identical. So you basically have one, two, three, four different parts that are uniform, and they can create create that joint. And then, at least with the small version, these are really easy to snap together I just find this surprisingly fun and sat and satisfying to just pop all these little parts together oops yeah these smaller ones had some some issues with the that's why I added the uh, little support on the inside here to strengthen strengthen these pieces because uh, there was some shearing that happens along this um, particular uh, fabrication line of the layers so solve that problem but um yeah so just you can you can do all kinds of different things with this not that you would ever want to do this exactly but this is kind of a <laughs> silly little configuration here uh, that's one of the things I like like about this that you can uh, reconfigure this in all different kinds of ways to create different functions um, and even when these are broken they still they still work a little which is kind of cool but I mean obviously that's not a desirable thing this was the alpha version of of, uh, of this part right here which uh, I wanted it to be a lot stronger because I was going to be clamping it from the outside 
but I, I discovered pretty quickly that one, even one millimeter of this white PLA is pretty strong, so um, I didn't really need those internal strength structures, and I didn't need this flat uh, layer here either, although, you know, you could you could do all kinds of different things for various applications depending on your needs. I find the the fully clear and kind of open configuration works the best for me because uh, I like to be able to see everything that's going on in there. And secondly, if I want to run wires through um, through these parts, then I can just you know run cables right through here, um, which is kind of convenient. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't know what else is there to say these. I did just kind of want to show off the the initial design because I think it's really like it's just so elegant and simple and yet so effective and easy. Um, the the true beauty of this joint is that you can just completely disassemble it without damaging any of the parts and then uh, put it all the way back together also without damaging any parts. So it's like I would say a toolless construction I would like to say toolless however as the scale as the scale goes up the strength required and the difficulty to to put it together it requires a, a lot of force on a very small surface area so uh, not entirely toolless unless you want to break a finger but basically you just pop pop the one of the little tongues into the the groove can be a little difficult when you're uh, working in these tighter areas where there's multiple sides that all need to be snapped together but yeah overall uh, a success I would say especially for something that just took me about an hour to to design I was like absolutely blown away when it worked flawlessly the very first time I I put it together I was very very pleased with that I'll just chalk that up to hundreds, if not thousands, of hours of experience in SketchUp, creating mechanically accurate um, designs and then prototyping them out. So yeah, um, making some progress. I I intend. This is a part of a larger thing. Now that I have a industrial grade three D printer. My plans are are basically to fully open the lab. I'm going to be teaching and I'm going to be offering 3D design as a service and along with 3D printing. But mainly what I want to do is create products like this and then release them fully open source and freely uh, to with it in the public domain so that anyone who wants to use them can have access to my designs and print them out themselves. So, so yeah, that's, that's the end goal. That being said, like, um, I'm super low income and I, I do, I would like to make at least like 500 a month. That's my, my target. Uh, however, however I'm able to do that, whether that's selling specific 3d prints of useful utilitarian objects on ebay or whether that's some kind of like kofi or patreon or whatever the hell i don't know but i, I uh, i'm just kind of like throwing that out there because i i want to i want to be able to give away all of my designs without any strings attached but also hope that people will in some way recognize the value of the time and the effort that I put into my design work and hopefully send a little money my way even if it's just like a quarter or a dollar or whatever the hell that it adds up I mean I have over do I have over 2,000 subscribers I had over 2,000 subscribers at one point and I'm hoping that you know at least a fraction of those people might get some utility from this but anyway the work continues so that's just something that is is going to be happening in in the near future so it's a little uh, turret 
Uh, one thing I want to do to modify this design, this is like a, a future revision to this, is uh, integrate some kind of tensioning mechanism that allows me to automatically, or not automatically, but like by turning a dial or or sliding a, a little lever or something that I'm able to increase the pressure, the tension on these joints so that, um, you know, basically it creates posable, posable arms, posable robotic arm joints for, you know, creating a more rigid infrastructure when necessary. Um, yeah, I guess... I don't have a whole bunch more to say on this other than I'm super excited. Like, uh, I just, I love this shit so much. Like being able to just create stuff from my imagination, basically, that is very utilitarian and functional and useful and kind of leverages my years of uh, 3D modeling on a more like engineering sort of uh, side of, of 3D modeling. So, so yeah, um, thanks for watching, and um, I will be releasing this design fairly soon, open source, so that you can download. I mean, uh, it's not like any of this is new. You know, there's Thingiverse and uh, Printables, two sites where you can, you can download people's models and stuff. I don't know what route I'm going to go yet. I'm still kind of working through all that. I just know that I want I want to make I want to make them freely available. Okay. So, yeah. Neo Toy Lab is go. And thanks for watching.